Okay, uh, so thank you very much. It's great to be here today, and I'm going to be talking about uh, conservation efforts for Swinho softshell turtle in Vietnam. Um, so the Asian Turtle Program, we're, we're based primarily in Hanoi, in, in Vietnam. We have eight staff working on a, a range of different projects. Um, so as many of you know, Raftus is, is now considered the, the most endangered turtle in the world. Uh, so Raftus Swinhoei, there's, there's only four individuals that were, that were in existence. Um, it's a very large animal, it gets up to 150 kilograms in size or more. Um, historically, it's ranged in, in southern China, northern Vietnam, and possibly in Laos. Um, unfortunately, in the, the large river systems and associated wetlands where it occurs, it's been heavily hunted, uh, mostly for, for local consumption. Um, in, in Vietnam itself, the, the, the species is most famous for animals that used to inhabit Hanoi's Hoan Kim Lake. So this is in downtown central Hanoi. Uh, it's incredible that the species uh, used to survive there. Um, and it's actually considered a, a sacred lake. So Hoan Kim actually means Lake of the Restored Sword. Uh, and this is because of a 15th century legend where King Le Loi used a magical sword uh, to defeat an uh, invading Chinese army. Uh, and a giant turtle, when he was out on the lake one day, came and took his sword and disappeared into the lake. And because of that legend, the, the animals that inhabited the lake and the lake itself are considered sacred uh, and like a holy site. Um, unfortunately, the, the last known animal um, in the lake that was affectionately known as Kuzua, which means grandfather turtle, uh, died this year, so on the 19th of January 2016, um, it was observed floating uh, in the lake. Um, we, we first heard about this about 5 p.m. and it was on social media that a lot of this information was initially coming out. Um, some of the, the, the newspapers in Vietnam started to produce stories on it, but the timing was uh, really not, not ideal. It was during the National Congress where the next leader for Vietnam is chosen. And so this was a really uh, in, in, inauspicious event. Um, it was very negative. A lot of the uh, media were, were talking about what does this mean for the Vietnamese government if this animal dies. It's a sacred animal. It's, it's good fortune to the country to see it. If it dies on the day of the National Congress, what does this mean? And so there was a, there was a lot of fear, I think, within, within the authorities about um, you know, the animal dying at this time. Um, we had actually notified the authorities that this, this is something that they should prepare for. So in 2010 and 11, the animal in the lake had become very sick. Um, it had to be re removed and treated. Um, at that time, the, the water was very polluted, as you can see in the picture here. Um, and guidance was given on uh, what, what could be done if the animal died in terms of live tissue collection and preservation. Um, there was some reluctance for the authorities to actually make any progress to, towards developing a plan because they were concerned well, they, they didn't want to acknowledge that the animal might die. It's a sacred animal. It, it wasn't an easy situation for them. Uh, the following day after the animal died, we, we did get access to it, but we weren't allowed to take any samples. We were only allowed to view the animal. Um, and they, they, they really wanted to determine what to do with it um, before anyone could touch it. Um, the only other known animal in Vietnam is in Dong Mo Lake, just outside of Hanoi. Um, it's a site that we, we identified in 2007. There was some recommendation that the animal there be caught and brought into Han be, be brought into Hanoi to be put in the lake so that the legend could continue. Uh, fortunately, there was a number of uh, well-respected um, national experts that came out and said that this, this was not suitable, the lake wasn't a good environment, you know, there'd be risks of killing the animal if they brought it in, and that, that wouldn't be um, seen as favourable either. Uh, so here's a, a photo. So eventually on the, the 21st of April, after many meetings, they decided um, that the animal would be preserved. So the authorities want to present it, similar to the uh, previous animal which died in, in Huanquim Lake that is, is in a pagoda, in a, in a glass tank. They want to preserve this specimen. They've, they've decided to use um, plastination, where the, the, the oils and waters in the animal will be, will be replaced with plastic, so it will give them a, um, a quite a durable specimen. <laughs> Um, and so on the 21st of April, the necropsy was undertaken. Uh, we did have staff present and WCS vets were also present and allowed to collect tissue samples, so that's quite positive. Um, you know, during, during the necropsy, the animal you know, was, was sexed, so previously national media had reported that it was a, a female. Um, this is something that many uh, international experts disagreed with, um, and during the, the, the necropsy it was, was confirmed as a male. Uh, so, I mean, the loss of that animal there, it leaves, it leaves three known globally. Um, I mean, something we've always done since 2003 is surveys throughout northern Vietnam, looking for potential sites, um, monitoring those sites. 
And just in the last year, 2015, we've done provincial surveys in four additional provinces. So during these surveys, we go to every district, we look for information on large soft shells. We also collect information on, on any other turtle species that are there. We currently manage a database of over 3,000 trade and field records from, from Vietnam. Um, you know, during, during these last surveys, we did get two provinces where there was large soft shells reported. One of those was in the southern range of uh, Rafatus, so Hating province. Um, but there we were also seeing a Mida cartilaginia in the trade, so it's possible that those, those large animals are actually a Mida. But there was another site in Quang Ninh province, which is sort of north, northeastern Vietnam. And there's one lake there where there's, there's reports of a, a 36 kilogram turtle that was caught 20 years ago. And in the last year, people are saying that they have seen um, a large, large turtle. So at these sites, you know, we've, we've, we've covered actually 18 provinces now in northern Vietnam lo looking at distribution for raptors. And this map just shows uh, the, the, sort of the darker brown areas, uh, the, the districts within those provinces where there's historical information. You know, some of these sites, we're, we're getting quite, quite strong information. So this is one lake, again, just outside of Hanai, Swan Kang, Swan Kang Lake. And uh, here there was fishermen who claimed to have seen a, a large soft shell. This photo here is a bit like lo the Loch Ness Monster and a suck on a stick. I always say it could be a beer bottle, it could be a turtle. But this is uh, what the fishermen photographed and they thought it was a turtle. They went out to try and catch it and large crowds of people were gathering to see them doing this. Um, at you know, this lake we've had staff there, we've spent a month doing observations, we've seen red ear sliders and, and Chinese soft shell turtles but we haven't confirmed raptors. And we have a number of sites like this, so you know, at, at present we have uh, five sites where we're employing staff to do monitoring, um, but uh, only one site have we, we confirmed the species. Um, but all of these sites we do community activities, so we, we try and engage the community in, in creative ways, so we do community football matches, boat races, school programs, uh, all of these have a very strong turtle conservation focus. Uh, but Dongo Mo Lake remains the only place where we've confirmed the species. Um, local fishermen believe there's more than one individual, they report animals of different sizes, um, it's a 1,400 hectare lake, so it, you know, it's, it's, it's significant and it's not, it's not easy to monitor. Um, but all the photographs that we have, it, it, we've been able to overlay transparencies of, of the head markings and it's the same individual. So I mean, that doesn't, doesn't really give a lot of support to the fact that there's more animals. Um, but we're going to continue monitoring and we hope there are. Um, you know, Dongmo Lake, there are threats and we, we, are, we have staff full time out there monitoring the lake, working with the fishermen. Um, fortunately, the lake is managed with, with two lake owners uh, and they, they agree to not hunt the turtle. All of the fishermen sign annual no hunting agreements, which uh, we have police and forest department present for those signings. Um, they, they still fish, obviously, um, and their nets are um, a potential threat. Uh, fortunately, they're not using particularly strong nets, so often they, they get ripped, as in, as in the photo here, where the, you know, they, they believe the turtle has, has torn through a net. Um, something that happened in March last year, uh, 2015, was some individuals who were working around the lake, uh, they weren't fishermen, they encountered uh, a raffle sleeping in the shallows, um, and they were able to pounce on it and flip it. I mean, if you're a researcher, you, you could spend years looking for a raffle and you never find one. But these, these guys, they stumbled on one uh, at night, sleeping in the shallows. Um, they called two relatives uh, who came to try and help remove the animal from the lake. They actually had it in a rice sack and they were pulling it through the shallows to try and get to the bank and the animal escaped. And we heard about this the next day. And this was a, a very close encounter uh, for, for that animal. We got the police involved, we got the forestry department involved, we went down there, we explained the situation, the, the legality of it. Um, this was a village that we hadn't focused a lot on for awareness because it's not a fishing village. Um, so following this, we have started doing community activities in this village also. Um, but this, this sort of highlights the, the situation where we have animals in this lake it's relatively well protected, but there's always these risks, and you know, sometimes you just can't, you can't predict what's going to happen. Um, so that was, a, you know, that was a scary event. Um, we also have been seeing sort of an increase in these smaller hook lines being used in the lake. Uh, so these are sort of relatively lightweight fishing lines with multiple hooks, which are set for Pelodiscus sinensis, the Chinese softshell turtle. Um, they are obviously uh, a threat to, to raffitus, be through injury or um, accidental capture. They aren't significant as the, the old fishing technique or hunting technique for raffitus. So these are um, a set of old hooks which are very heavy, strong lines, and these are specifically for catching raffitus um, in Dongmo Lake. Uh, fortunately, none of these have been used anymore, and we actually were, were collecting in all of these hooks that we encounter. 
Um, something that's just happening right now, so in June this year, one of the golf courses, so Dongma Lake close to Hanoi, is being designated as sort of the, um, the, the tourist centre for Hanoi. There, there, there's lots of eco resorts and golf courses and things being developed. One of the golf courses is currently extending its um, uh, number of holes, and so to do that, they're, they're, they're filling in uh, sections of the lake. And so these things we're monitoring, we're reporting to the uh, various government agencies. A very new development is um, we've just rented an island, so it's a nice little island on Dong Mo. Um, it's an interesting place because the, the lake owner built a pond with a little island within the island. So we've got an island in an island that we're now renting um, and we plan to build a little research station on here. Um, it's also got potential for a semi-wild uh, enclosure, so the fact that it's, it's, it's already built for us is, is, is ideal. And so that's something that we're going to be starting to develop over the next year. Um, on the same island, uh, so in January last year, uh, we, we built an artificial nesting beach. Uh, currently within the lake, there's no, no suitable nesting environment for the, for the raffitus. The, the water fluctuates a lot over the course of a year. There's no sandbanks, um, so we've constructed one. We've just extended it uh, this year so that it goes, it's graded down to the, the, the low water level. And we need to add more sand, so basically we, we can provide that nesting habitat throughout the year. Um, we haven't seen any, any activity on the nesting beach yet. We've also built a no fishing zone, so there's one particular area within the lake, it's the deepest area, that's where we see the animal most frequently. Um, and so we have a, an agreement with the lake owner and the fisherman that there's a 13 hectare no fishing zone. Uh, I'm going to show a short video after this presentation where our staff have actually filmed the animal in the wild for the first time. So it's the first ever wild footage of Raffitus and it's actually bobbing around next to one of these boys in the no fishing zone. So we've, we've put it in the right place, that's, that's good to know. Um, just uh, last year, uh, Peter Prashag brought over some of the deep water traps um, so that we could sort of test deploying them from, from the local boats. Uh, we're having more of these built in Hanoi right now, uh, and we're, we're discussing with the authorities about permissions to actually do trapping so that we can sex the animal in, in Dongmo, potentially look at additional animals, um, and there's things, there's things such as you know, uh, semen collection so that we can look at artificial intamination with the animals in China. So that's something that. Um, Hopefully, we'll, we'll get permissions for very shortly. And so, as, um, you know, the last few years have been busy. I mean, we, this is just one of the projects we have. We, you know, we, we also manage a, a rescue centre where there's over a thousand animals of, of 23 native species. Uh, we have projects on the Vietnamese pond turtle, some of the box turtles. Um, but this is this is one of our you know, priority projects, of course, because this is this species is on the edge. There's only three animals currently known in the world. Um, uh, this year, we're actually working with one of the ministries in Hanoi. There was a new law developed in 2013, which we supported, which now gives legal protection to the species for the first time in Vietnam. Um, as part of that, the, the, the same ministry is now wanting to develop a tortoise and freshwater turtle conservation plan for Vietnam, so which will cover all 25 species. But within that, we have, we have, we've set a list of priorities where we want to have very detailed plans for what the government agencies can be doing for, for, for better protection. Uh, we want to look at uh, developing the um, the research station on, on the island there, uh, extending the sandbank, um, continue monitoring these sites. What, what we really need to do is get more staff. I mean, right now we have three core staff that work on Raptus, but we have multiple sites. You know, all of these sites, we really want to be having people full time monitoring, trying to confirm animals. You know, spending a month isn't really long enough. We need to invest more time. Okay, thank you.